Hello to all fans of physics and physical experiments. I'm Andrei Shetnikov, and today we'll be talking about the design of school measuring instruments. Here I have assembled a simple circuit consisting of a battery, a light bulb, and a button. And I've set up two measuring instruments, an amateur to measure the current, and a voltmeter to measure the uh, voltage across the light bulb. And as it should be, the amateur is connected in series with the light bulb, and the voltmeter is connected in parallel to it. And now, I want to ask, what is inside those little boxes? How are these instruments constructed? Right now, we'll open them up and see what's inside. Our instruments are designed for measuring direct currents and voltages. Each of them has two scales with different ranges. To measure higher currents and voltages, the wire going to the positive terminal should be plugged into the right red terminal, dicta, and for lower values, would be into the left one. The wire going to the negative terminal is plugged into the black terminal. I have removed the front covers, and we can see that the two instruments are constructed absolutely identically in their basic parts. A coil made of very thin wire is mounted on the moving part of the instrument. When electric current flows through this coil, it rotates in the magnetic field, created by a permanent magnet, and the angle of the needle's rotation is proportional to the current flowing through the coil. So, both instruments, in their physical essence, measure electric current and are amateurs. But then how do they differ from each other? Let's remove the back cover and see that there are resistors installed inside both instruments, but they have different ratings and are installed differently. And I'll start with the construction of the ammeter. The device installed inside is actually a microammeter and it can measure currents up to a thousand microamperes. That is one milliampere. If the current is higher, the needle will simply go off the scale and even higher currents, so we'll just burn it out. In other words, you absolutely cannot pass currents on the order of one ampere through it. That's why the resistors uh, inside are arranged as follows. Here I have the three amp terminal, and here is the negative terminal. And right here, there is a resistor of 0.2 ohms. Essentially, the entire current will flow through it. And it's so small in value that um, the currents in the circuit will hardly change because of it. Everything else is uh, the second branch of the circuit. And here in this branch, there is the microammeter itself, and also a significant um, resistor of 550 milliohms. This second one at 0 0.088 is much smaller, so we can ignore it for now. Now look, here we have a resistance of 0 0.22 ohms. And the device itself also has a resistance of 90 ohms. So overall, the resistance of this branch is 3,000 times greater than the resistance of this direct path. That's why the current that branches off here is 3,000 times smaller. If I have 3 amperes flowing like this, then here only 1 milliampere flows. And that's exactly when the needle deflects to the full scale. Now, when I want to measure, currents using the second scale, 0 0.6 amperes. I will connect here and to the negative terminal. Now my main line is this one. And here I have 0 0.22 ohms and another 0 0.88. So the resistance has increased fivefold. And accordingly, here it remains as it was. And that's why when a current of 0 0.6 amperes flows here, Exactly one milliampere will flow here, and the needle will deflect to the full scale. That's how our device is constructed. Now we need to talk about how the resistors installed inside the case of this device turn a microammeter into a voltmeter. This is a school instrument designed for conducting laboratory work, and it will be used to measure the voltage drop across relatively small resistances, no more than a few e dozen ohms. And inside the device itself, a resistor with a resistance of just over 3 kilo ohms is connected in series with the microammeter. And when I apply a 
voltage of 3 volts to this resistance, a current of about uh, 1 milliampere will flow through the circuit. So 3 volts is exactly the maximum on the scale here and the micrometer's needle will deflect to its full angle. But if I want to measure voltages up to 6 volts, then the load needs to be connected to this terminal. And here I have another 3 kilo ohm resistor. The total resistance of this circuit will double. And accordingly, with a voltage of 6 volts, I will still get a current of 1 milliampere. And the needle will deflect to its maximum angle. So we've just looked at the simplest school instruments, a DC voltmeter and a meter. It's time for the final question. And it is this. How should an emitter be designed to measure alternating current? Share your thoughts on this in the comments below this video on YouTube.